I'm not going to spend too much time explaining why I'm plugging in what I'm plugging in. Um, you can use the video before to get, kind of get the why. Here I'm just going to reinforce the how. Okay, so just kind of reinforcing using parentheses, using um, the whatever function your calculator has for that exponent, um, specifically used for scientific notation, um, and then also kind of paying attention to what happens when you multiply or divide or add or subtract variables. And these variables here are really units, but you can treat them just like x's or y's or whatever like you would in math class. The math works the same. Okay, So here, for 1.6 times 10 to the 4th, I'm going to start some parentheses and do 1.6. Use that function times 10 to the 4th. Oh, that's 1.26, excuse me. There we go. Times 10 to the 4th. Close my parentheses. I'm adding it. So plus new parentheses set. 2.5 times 10 to the 3rd. And sorry, I messed up there. I kept writing 23 and I was like, no. I could do that, but kind of keep things on a better order of magnitude. Okay. When I plug that in my calculator, and if your calculator looks different, please plug it in into yours as well, and make sure that you get the same number for your answer. So I've got 15,100, right? X plus X is still X, so kilograms plus kilograms is still kilograms, okay? Now, that's a good number, but we could also practice putting it in scientific notation. So here, if I were to look at the beginning, I could put a decimal between the 1 and 5 and have a 1.5 for my coefficient. And I would need to multiply 1.5 times 10, 1, 2, 3, 4 times. So those are the same numbers here. So this or that, they're exactly the same. Okay, let's look down here. We've got, see I started some parentheses. So the coefficient 5.36 times 10 to the negative first power. So negative 1. Okay, close my parentheses. And now I'm subtracting, so minus 7.4 times 10 to the negative 2. And that 0 there you can put if you are more comfortable. If it's a trailing 0 behind a decimal place, um, it's there for significant digits, but it's not going to affect your answer if you leave it out um, in the calculator. But we'll go ahead and just plug it in un just to be safe So um, yeah, until you all are more comfortable with it. So I'm going to put my coefficient, 7.4. 0 times 10 to the negative 2, so times 10 to the, that's that e, negative 2 for my exponent. It's going to give me 0.462. All right, x minus x would be x still, so grams minus grams is also grams. Okay. Let's practice putting this in scientific notation, though. That's a number less than 1. If I were to move my decimal place over between the 4 and 6, I would have 4.6 for my coefficient, which is between 1 and 10 like I need it to be. So I would have to take 4.6 and divide it by 10 one time. But remember, i got to multiply it by 10 to the negative 1 power. That's the same thing as dividing by 10 one time. So either way. Okay. Let's look here. I'm trying to hold this at the right angle so you can see the lighting's kind of funny today. So I've got a new number, so I'm going to start some parentheses. Coefficient is 4.2 times 10 to the positive 2 exponent, All right, multiplied by 1.7 times 10 to the 8th. So my coefficient is 1.7 times 10 to the 8th. And here, this is pretty cool to show you guys too. So some calculators, um, and actually most calculators have an, an ability to go into your settings and change it to do this. A lot of calculators, if your um, answer is going to take up more digits than the screen will offer, it will automatically put it in scientific notation. But you can set yours up where it always does that as well. Um, you can ask me, and I can help you find that function on your calculator or setting. All right. So this already tells me I've got 7.4 times 10 to the 10. Some calculators, instead of saying times 10, it might just say e, but that e, remember, means times 10 to the, so you could do that as well. So here it gives me 7.14 times 10 to the 10th power. That looks like an 11, there you go. Um, if we were to expand that, we just move our decimal place to the right 10 times. So um, go ahead and do it just for fun. So I got 7, I'm going to move it to the right 2 times, is going to, oops. Just kidding. Let's write it down here. 7, 1, 4. That's only two times, though, so I need to move it eight more times. So I'm going to need eight placeholder zeros. Okay. 
So this is the number my, my calculator gave me. It means this. <laughs> and here I've got meters times meters. So just like x times x, I'm going to use a dot for x now, is going to be x squared. The same thing happens with meters, so now I've got meters squared. Okay, these are the same numbers here. Okay. Let's try to vision. So a new number. I'm going to start a new set of parentheses. Coefficient is 9.76 multiplied by 10 to the negative third power. Close your parentheses. Now we're going to divide it by, move this over here so we can see, new number is 2.11 times 10 to the negative 2. All right. My calculator gives me 4.63. We can go ahead and round that 2 up to a 3 because of the 5. No need in writing all that out. These numbers are not really going to change that number too much. Okay, so I get 0 0.463 grams divided by milliliters. This isn't like X's that cancel. This is kind of, you could say grams is X and milliliters is Y. So if I do X divided by Y, I can't simplify that anymore. So same thing with the units. Now I've got grams per milliliter is the way that we say this. Okay, and this is actually a good um, to kind of go back and look at density. So um, we had a practice problem earlier in the slides where we looked at the density of the sun's lower atmosphere and said that it's a mass divided by a volume, grams per cubic centimeter. Well, milliliter is just a very small um, piece of a liter. Okay, it's a thousandth of a liter. And liters measure volume, so milliliters measure, measure volume as well. So I've got mass per volume, so this would be a great way to express a density. Okay. I could also do the same thing we did up here and do 4.63 times 10 to the negative 1. I've got to divide by 10 one time, and it'd still be grams per milliliter.